about 11.36 on January 24th, and I call the Senate Rules and Administration Committee <coughs> to order. We have a quorum. Members, we are here today to hear a Rule 21 Committee referral objection to SF1 made by Senator Abler. This is not a hearing on the bill, just the referral of the bill. So Senator Abler, welcome to the Rules Committee. Uh, please state for the record your name and then why you think this bill was not properly referred. Oh, perfect. And uh, Senator Jim Abler from Anoka, good place to raise your kids. And I, every time I sit in this room, I just get more excited about how beautiful it turned out after the remodeling and, um, and the honor we have to serve here. And I don't think I've ever been in the Rules Committee in the Senate, so it's kind of a, a special time. And I, um, my comments, Madam Chair, are very succinct. So. Um, but I do appreciate the opportunity to discuss this bill. And I woke up this morning in my quiet time. I just happened to read this verse. And the image, in, in the divine image, God made human beings. And then I was, I get this verse a day thing, and the verse a day popped up. Uh, it says, Psalm 138, the Lord will work out his plans for my life, for you made me. And so um, just in brief, this bill is not a minor bill. I understand it's Senate File 1. I understand the importance it has to many members uh, on your side of the aisle, Madam President, or Chair, or whatever you are here. Um, and I respect that. And I respect how elections determine how we get to vote on things. But that doesn't mean that it's a matter that we should not ex examine thoroughly. And um, that's my reason for asking for this hearing and for asking, frankly, for more time. Uh, this bill does not just uh, do Roe versus Wade, it goes far beyond, and there's some questions that come into that which I think uh, are meritorious. And, um, and so in the committee, which by the way is a 6-3 committee, uh, which I think is not a good number to have on a committee as important as the Health and Human Services Committee, um, should be 6-4 at least, um, we, uh, the, the chair did a very nice job of the testifiers came, and then when it came to the time for amendments and discussion, it really was rushed. Uh, there were things we could not be able to answer uh, and flesh out. Uh, one thing that did, was not answered there specifically was the need to find a person. Uh, the author, in, in fact, refused to answer. And in my comments uh, on the floor, I suggested that maybe this could have been addressed in judiciary or further in the Human Services Committee. Um, which it has not been. And the question that remains un unasked is, unanswered is, when are human rights ascribed to an unborn baby? And that remains undecided to this point. And I think a little more time in the, human, in the Health Committee and in Judiciary, in fact, directed toward this point will be greatly helpful uh, going forward. And ironically, again today, uh, on the floor, I, the article about Kayla O'Neill, is that her name, O'Neill? Um, uh, it was in the paper. Today, both papers had the article about how the, sadly, Messiah died. <clears throat> and on the question of personhood, um, it says, the cause of death, the coroner's office said, was not from being hit by gunfire, but by complications from his mother being shot. And so the charge of homicide or whatever is really directed toward a preborn child, which is somehow ironic. And I think it really is our job as best we can to, to def define these rights about what they are. The law is full of chapters of rights. So I'm not going to beleaguer any of these points. I'm just going through a list. Um, and then what, something else I asked specifically then, which we we're unable to figure out. I had two amendments um, about the offering of ultrasound, if it was available and the mother could refuse, or offering uh, anesthesia to a baby who is capable of feeling pain, which the mother could refuse. And my desire was to inquire of the providers, uh, Planned Parenthood and others who are doing this, how they operate this. Uh, the other senators uh, in the committee said, well, that's, we're not gonna do, discuss clinical practice in a law. I said, well, I'm curious how it really is then, so we know if we need to protect something in the law. Many of our laws are about protection. We did not get a chance to talk about that. Um, and something else that has uh, not been addressed and is still outstanding is the fiscal concern of this bill. Uh, I requested a fiscal note, apparently the chair did as well, so one should be coming, but it's not available yet. And the question I want to raise, uh, particularly if you have a fundamental right to a series of services, contraception, sterilization, abortion, 
pre-birth stuff, um, you know, prenatal care, compared to it just being something that we do, um, that must have a cost. Uh, Roe versus Wade ascribed the opportunity for a person to get an abortion, but not, and, and, and Doe versus Gomez assigned that if the person hasn't got enough money, then they can get one that we will pay for. But it didn't call it a fundamental right, and it didn't include sterilization services, which I don't think they give those away, and all the prenatal care that a person has a fundamental right to. We didn't figure out who has a right to demand that, um, which is apparently everybody. If your insurance doesn't pay, do they have to pay? Do we have to pay the deductible? Um, would that be a state cost? Those are questions that were not answered, that remain unanswered uh, at this time. And, and finally, and I'm almost done, um, we did not clarify kind of just what I was talking about, what a fundamental right looks like compared to a right. And I think that is really key. And so, uh, Madam Chair, you're aware I, I don't support the bill, uh, but I think in terms of being prudent legislators and really focusing on the impact of something that's really groundbreaking and so expansive uh, as this bill is, these are questions that need to be answered. And I, my emotion was not in the least bit dilatory. It was in a very much an effort to get at these policy questions. So that looking forward, you won't need more court cases to decide this and people hanging in the balance about do I get prenatal care, is that my right, uh, I can't afford it, who pays, and questions like that. So thank you, Madam Chair, and I do really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Senator Abler. Uh, Senator Wicklin, the HHS committee was referenced. Do you, do you want to get up and comment about that hearing at all? I know you had protesters, not protesters, I know you had testifiers, and um, a good discussion. Talk about the length of the discussion. Thank you, Senator Wickland. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would like to say that I believe that our hearing in, in the Health and Human Services Committee was uh, thorough, and we were able to allow for ample time for discussion. We had over 20 testifiers. Um, there were, uh, I'd say majority were in opposition of the bill, but we had over 20 testifiers. We had ample time for amendments. The uh, minority uh, members offered six amendments. We discussed and debated them. Um, I believe that we gave ample, um, ample time for discussion of those and also points that um, uh, members wish to make about the bill and their, their opinions. Um, I think that we have differences of opinion about many questions, but I, I believe that the hearing allowed for ample opportunity for expression of those opinions. Thanks. Thank you, Senator Wickland. Are members any questions? Senator Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair and, and Senator Wickland. Were you able to give more time than the committee uh, typically allows for a committee session uh, to discuss this bill? Senator Wickland. Uh, Madam Chair, we, uh, Senator Johnson, we went over, I believe, um, I think we went until about 1045. So, I mean, we, we went beyond our, our committee time um, and were able to progress to a vote within that. Thank you, members. Any other questions? All right, Senator Murphy, would you make the motion to adopt the previous committee report from the Judiciary Committee on Senate File 1? Madam Chair, that is my motion. So all in Madam favor? Madam Chair? Yes. Senator Can I make Denton. a motion to amend that? You may. I think it's amendable. I, I would just simply uh, take out the floor and uh, insert Health and Human Services. So Senator Johnson amends the motion to send it back to the floor, to send it to HHS Health and Human Services. to um, HHS committee. Any discussion? Senator Murphy? Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thank you for your motion. I understand it. Uh, and I would ask members to vote against the motion. Uh, as uh, Senator Wickland described, uh, this bill was given a full and thorough hearing with debate, testifiers, and amendments. Um, and while I understand and appreciate that this is an issue that has strong opinions and strong perspectives. 
um, using the process to try and re-refer in a way to not necessarily expand the discussion, um, but to thwart progress is something I'm concerned about. Um, and given the testimony of Senator Wickland, uh, and I have deep respect for Senator Abler and your perspective, and this is not the first time that we've had this discussion over our many, many years of service together. Uh, I do believe that the bill is in the proper form and should go to the floor as scheduled, and so I've asked members to vote against uh, the Johnson Amendment. Senator Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I appreciate the comments there, and I appreciate Senator Wicklin allowing for uh, slightly extra time on the particular bill at hand. However, this is an issue that's fundamental to both sides uh, of the topic. Uh, you know, to have a few hours uh, extra of time in committee doesn't grasp the significance of this bill. And we just saw today that Senator Abler had some very thoughtful questions that I think do deserve some uh, more work, some more thought, uh, some more answers that we simply need before we can go onto the floor. And so the idea that we can wrap this up in one or maybe two committee hearings uh, on a bill that's so fundamental to so many Minnesotans, I think it's an, uh, just an unjust move, that a little more time in committee would really help to alleviate some of the concerns that many Minnesotans have. Uh, thank you, Senator Johnson. Senator Limmer, did you have a comment? Uh, Madam Chair, the only comment I have is to ask for a roll call. Roll call has been asked, roll call granted. Madam Chair. Um, Senator Abler. And I want to thank you for the time, and I don't have any more comments to make about the bill. I just do want to react in the kindest way I can. Uh, Senator Murphy's comment about thwarting the progress, that is not the intent. My intent is purely a policy basis, and uh, I just wanted to comment about that. And I hope members will actually decide to support Senator Johnson's motion, and let's have a little more time. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, members? So the motion is Senator Johnson amended the motion, Senator Murphy's motion, to instead of going to the floor, this would send the bill back to HHS, and we'll clerk call the roll. Chair Dietzik. No. Uh, ranking Senator Johnson. Yes. Vice Chair Rest. No. Champion. No. Icorn. Aye. Prince. No. Limmer? Aye. Marty? No. Miller? Aye. Murphy? No. So with six no's and four yeses, the amendment does not, amendment to the motion does not pass. So we're back to the original motion. Any comments? All right, a roll call has been requested, a roll call granted. And so the motion, um, Senator Murphy's motion, is to adopt the previous committee report from the Judiciary Committee on Senate File 1. So it is on the floor. Chair Dietzik? Yes. Johnson? No. Rest? Yes. Champion? Yes. Icorn? No. Friends? Yes. Limmer? No. Marty? Yes. Miller? No. Murphy? Yes. So the vote is six in favor, four against, and so with that, the motion passes. So thank you, Senator Abler. Thank you, Madam um, Chair and members. I really appreciate the discussion. Um, thank you, members. That is our business is done to today, for today. Um, I will remind you, and I'll be talking to Senator Johnson about this afterwards, that we are um, tentatively scheduled to meet tomorrow to discuss the non-discrimination and anti-harassment policy. So with that, we are adjourned.